So, no Macedonian, apologize, just my poor English, because I can't yet talk Macedonian. Maybe one day I will be able to, I hope, say a few words, but thank you first of all to uh, get me here. Um, I'm, I'm glad to be here for different reasons. First of all, good to see that the digital industry uh, or the digital advertising in Macedonia create some interest, people are coming, are spending part of their day to uh, share, to inspire and to learn from each other. So for me, that is like a, a nice good sign. And I will explain in, in the presentation a little bit what, what IB Europe is all doing, uh, how we are organized and, and why maybe it could be interesting for you. But there is, of course, a special feeling by being here because like uh, one year ago, I was uh, already here for the first time in Skopje and I met Savica, I met uh, Darko, and we started to talk about Macedonia, what was for me a new market where I was never been before and, and discovering a little bit like how it is structured, how advertising is behaving in traditional media, in new media, and how um, everything, and, and also in the associative worlds. Uh, do we have associations in Macedonia, yes or no, and how people are thinking and feeling about that. And, and we launched the idea, uh, I think the three of us, we launched the idea, like why not uh, look if it would be worth to create an IAB. I don't know how you pronounce here the IAB, is it EAB or whatever, but let's see uh, if it would be a good idea to create a trade association for digital advertising in Macedonia. And I must say, I'm very grateful and I'm also very glad and, and uh, it's a terrific news to be able to come back a year later to stand here and to be able to see, I think here somewhere on the different uh, uh, places, I see an IB with Macedonia behind. So they did it and that's for me uh, fantastic. You will see that it's country number 28 uh, on our European map. Uh, we started with IB Europe only four years ago. We were 10 countries and now we have 28 countries, so well done. It's like the new child in the family. Very glad that we have Macedonia and that some others will hopefully follow in the next coming weeks. So let's dive into the presentation and I will try to tell you a little bit. I've called it in general just some facts, figures, some, some trends and also a little bit of information about uh, IB Europe. And maybe to start with, uh, I thought like, First of all, let's define the mission of uh, an IB. An IB uh, is doing many things. You will see in the program of IB Macedonia or uh, any IB. Is it IB Croatia? Is it IB, IB Serbia, Poland, Norway, UK or Spain? We often do certain activities in the markets like education, like research, like regulation, start standardization. But the focus overall, because like any of your companies, you have also like a mission, a vision, and some ob objectives, well, the mission of IAB is really to grow the market. So all the focus is there to grow this digital advertising market from, in some markets, still only 5% market share to 10, 15, 20, and the most advanced markets in Europe are Denmark and UK, where already close to 34% of all spendings are on digital platforms. So imagine a couple of years ago where Macedonia was, uh, you were maybe at a certain percentage, one, two, three, four, five, like any other country, moving bit by bit towards something like 20, 30, 40 percent. Now, often people are saying to me, then, what is your goal, the growth? Is it like 50, 70, 80, 90? Sky is the limit? Don't know. No, I think the most important in 2012 is any marketeer in the room, any advertiser, agency, or media, I can only... Um, in try to inspire, try to explain to you that we should all become digital centric. I think in the 80s and in the 90s, it was normal that our advertising and communication strategies were TV centric, because TV was the most dominant platform where people were spending biggest part of their daily life, weekly life behind that platform. So it is normal for me that as an advertiser, probably you are TV-centric in that period. But I think in 2012, when you look to the Macedonian population, the European population, I think it is worth now, bit by bit, to try to move from the, probably you were as well, TV-centric 
period towards a digital-centric period. You start the conversation and the dialogue with your consumer on digital platforms. And from there, you can then go to TV, go to magazines, to billboards, to street animation, to whatever you want. But starting in the digital center place, I think that's the most important. And the market share of digital, we will see. I think more and more there is a convergence of all media towards digital platforms. It is the pad, it is a smartphone, it is a PC, it is an interactive television. Billboards in the street are often even now digital. And that convergence will make that, I guess, by 2015, 20, we will not talk anymore about traditional, new. It will be all kind of digital media that are coming up and coming to us through different touch points. And the touch points are different screens. And I'm sure that people will still, in a couple of years, read paper from time to time because we like the feeling of the paper and there will still be traditional way of doing marketing. People in the street doing sampling will not die. So there will be a combination, but I think digital will certainly change the way we are doing marketing communication. But so the growth is really there, the focus. Now, next to the, that growth, you could say like, there is a natural growth. Yes, it's true. If I'm not here, if IB Macedonia doesn't exist, digital market will grow because I think it's inevitable. Everybody starts bit by bit to invest money into the system. But I think we can have an impact as an IB on that growth by organizing it. Because what I don't like is play casino. Well, maybe private, you can like casino, but I think in general, if you want to build this industry and this business, you shouldn't just play with the casino and just say like, it will happen one day or another. I think you can influence the growth and organize the growth. And that's what IB is all about. And anybody in the room that is not yet, it's my invitation, not yet member of IB Macedonia, I think there were 20 founding members, I would invite, be in contact with IB Macedonia. Try to see what they could deliver to you, but also yourself try to put the agenda because it's a new IB, so everything needs to be structured. IB Macedonia can learn from other IBs. You will see that IB Bulgaria, IB Serbia will be talking here, IB Hungary, uh, Hungary as well. We can learn from each other, but Macedonia is Macedonia. It's an, uh, a special country, it's a special population with specific feelings, so we will need to adapt IB Macedonia to the needs of the markets. But probably they will do education and probably they will do some congress, seminars, awards. Probably they will do a certain number of activities but you can also influence the agenda to say, like, I think we need measurements. I think we need research. I think we need this and that. So create this body together with the founding members of IB Macedonia. Now, where we are today, like I said, an organized industry. We started with the first IB in the U.S. in 1996. And now we are, like, 16 years, 16 years later, uh, nearly. And in Europe... Uh, we created IB Europe as a central platform in 2008. Ten countries trying to think like, hey, we should learn more from each other. We should be everywhere. And by the way, we need a European platform to do what? To work and operate in Brussels. So my main responsibility compared to IB Macedonia is sitting in Brussels and making sure that the legislator, the regulator, is also educated because they will start to regulate massively digital advertising. Why? Because they think it's time. It's time like in any industry, food industry, medical industry, car industry, tabac, many things have been regulated, not yet digital advertising. And they will start bit by bit in different layers to regulate. What is not bad? I'm a lawyer from education and I think we need law, but we need good law. And we have seen already in the first steps that sometimes they don't understand very well what the internet is, what digital advertising is. And so we need to be very careful and hopefully in the next years we will be able to influence Brussels to come up with good law. And next to that, I will try to make sure that IB Macedonia with other IBs learn from each other and are becoming professional platforms. Where are we today? I, let, I just, just let you still in red, not to say like red light, but more to uh, highlight the fact that for me it's country number 28. It's special, it's great. 
and I hope that the other green areas are areas where we don't have yet a trade association. Portugal, Luxembourg, um, some of the Baltic states, Iceland. So we still have a number of countries where we don't have an IB, and I will make sure by traveling around that we can have an IB in all these countries very soon. And bit by bit, we, can't, we cannot see it, but we're moving step by step towards the Middle East. Uh, countries like Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, and maybe further down to Dubai, we might end up with also operating as IB EMEA, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. We might extend a little bit the arm. And I think what is in interesting is that the more countries we have in our, let's say, European cultural continent, the more we can learn from each other. Having, having brothers and sisters like the Russian IB today around the table, the Turkish IB where I was yesterday, but also the UK, Denmark, and many of them is, is rich because we can learn from each other and see what happened in a market. Why is Denmark at 34%? What did they do to be that big already in digital advertising? We can learn from them copy-paste and try to bring that over to Macedonia. So this is great. This is our organization. Like you see, we have staff everywhere, and that's, we are a non-profit, so we work for the industry being neutral and objective, but I want all these IBs to be ambitious, driven like a company. That's why we need staff, and we have 150 staff in the countries. We have 10 staff in the center with my European team, and you see that we represent an enormous amount of companies. It is not just there for the big companies. If you are a small company in Macedonia, welcome around the table. It's a long tail, a tail of 5,000 members at local level. And my members at the central level are at the bottom with the different logos. It's close to 80 corporate members that I have in the center. But in general, what I like still to say, it's, it's an open club for advertisers, agencies, media, European, tomorrow Chinese, Russians, Americans, everybody are welcome around the table because they create also the digital advertising market in Europe. It's not only about American brands, but also many different brands. What we need to provide certainly, we as European IB, but also IB Macedonia, is still data, 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 because people are looking for data, because people are still hesitating. Is it true that there are many people on, on, on internet? Yes or no? How many people are connected? What do they do every day? Um, how many hours do they spend behind digital platforms? All kind of information that we need to provide to the market. We need also to measure. And the measurement uh, challenge will also certainly be a challenge in Macedonia. How do we all measure that? And today we talk about measuring the online, but tomorrow imagine how we will need to compare TV measurements with online measurement. All kind of challenges that you as well in Macedonia will have, will have to solve. And I'm sure in the US the debate is the same, in China as well, and in Macedonia it will happen as well. How can you do cross-media, comparable measurement and data? Here what, what I, I thought to share with you is one, one, two different studies. One study is how much is invested on the market? What is the value of Macedonia? I don't know it. I hope you know it, or maybe you have a guess, but you should do a study every year that we call ADEX, Advertising Expenditure. How much was invested online in Macedonia in 2011, 2012? You do a research, a survey, you come up with a figure, and what we do at European level, we put all this data together from all the countries, and we make it comparable so that we can give a a size and an idea of Europe. Now, I have the figure for 2011, where Macedonia was not included, but I hope next year it will be. And the big figure last year was 21 billion. So imagine from where we come, 21 billion is today invested in digital platforms in Europe in 2011. Every day we look to uh, TV news and we see recession economical downturn, we see problems in many industries. Our industry last year was still growing 14.5%. This year, I've been listening to the markets, the year is not finished yet, but people are, are reporting me between 15 and 20% growth still this year. So again, in, in these difficult economical environments, having an industry that still grow 15 to 20%, creating jobs, creating companies, products and services for consumers, it's massive. In this year, it will be again. 
Not that the UK and Germany are not doing well. They are doing well, but a more mature market probably is only growing 10 to 15 percent, and, and the smaller, less mature markets are, uh, well, Russia is not a small market, Turkey as well, but in general, these markets were less mature in digital advertising, and they are growing massively and rapidly. That's one thing that we study. It is really to say what is the value and how can we compare at European level. Another thing that we did, and hopefully next year Macedonia will join that survey, it's a survey that is called Mediascope. And Mediascope is about, scope of media, is about the consumption of media by consumers in 2012. And not just online consumption or not an online survey. We go in the streets, we go on the telephone, and we ask to people by an interview, we ask to people, what are you doing every day? Which media do you consume? How many hours? To try to understand what they are doing and how that might influence our strategies. Now, today, like you see there, again, a European map. We don't have yet the flag of Macedonia, but I'm sure you can join us one day. And we try, through 50,000 consumers in Europe, we try to map the media consumption and the evolution of media consumption from traditional media, TV, newspapers, magazines, uh, online, in the online. What do you do online? Do you listen to radio online? Do you watch TV online? Do you read your newspaper online? Do you chat? Do you socialize? What do you do all online? And so we try to map that, and it's a deep study. 50,000 people with a nice sample and representation of the entire population. The first learning that is never bad, because I think advertisers still think about that, is reach. Is it still a medium where only young people are going? No, it's a medium where you and I, young, old, man, woman, ch child and, and ki uh, kids as well, but everybody connects themselves. And we are close to 65%, sorry, back here, four, so 426 million people from the adult population in Europe, the total is 652 million, but 426 million people already today in Europe are connected. Daily, weekly, monthly, we have the different figures. But so you see that, do you have reach in Europe? Yes, it's on average 65% of the population. It's not 100, but it's not 15 anymore. It is 65% on average. The average or the penetration is still growing, eh? the 65%, it is still growing. And what is also still growing, it is the time spent on digital platforms. You see the average is close to 15 hours per week. We will compare it to the other media, but it is quite massive. Eh? Imagine that on average, 15 hours per week are spent by 65% of the population throughout Europe. This penetration is still different from one market to another, and it's true that the Nordics or Western Europe are more developed in terms of penetration and usage than the South or Central East Europe. But what we can see in Central East Europe, and I don't have the figures here for all these markets, but it's often they spend more hours online than the European average. You go up to, yesterday I was in Turkey, and I think the average in Turkey is close to 18 hours, so above the 15. So a less big penetration of internet, but a higher consumption. And that's a pattern that we can see, I think, in most of the Central East European countries. A, a smaller penetration yet, but I think growing still from year to year, but a higher consumption. When you compare it exactly to the other media, you can see here that Compared to TV, that is still, in terms of consumption of the platform, the traditional TV screen, uh, it's close to 17 hours. We are close to the 15 hours. You see that the others are either stab stabilizing, either going down. Now, of course, that's why in a couple of years we might need to review a little bit the way we do the survey. More and more you see that online people are saying, I watch TV online. I listen to radio online. I, I read my newspaper, not on paper anymore, but online. So there is a bit of a convergence of our activities as a consumer are more and more organized around these different digital platforms. One thing that is very still new, uh, imagine this is the living room. It's well done. It's, a, it's like a living room. You would be sitting there and you see people watching TV and at the same time they do something different. They do two things together. We always thought in mankind that uh, only women can do two things together, but 
we also, we apparently, men and, and boy and, and, and girls and, and women, can do two things together. And what you see often is this multitasking. We have a smartphone, we have a pad, or we have a PC, and we watch TV. Is that good or is it bad for brand? Is it good or is it bad for advertising? Is it good or bad for content? Not sure yet. I think we need to learn to be humble and to try to learn and to see how that can influence our advertising. But what is the fact? It is that it's close to 50% on average. People are declaring and saying we do two things together. We consume easily two different media together. And when we have asked to the heavy users, like the heavy multitasking users, like, do, what do you do when you surf on your second device? 40% of them are saying, we see something about Skopje on television, and we will go and surf and look for more information about Skopje. So there is, for the content creators, I think it's a, it's an, it's, it's a strong message because it means that your content that is so valuable is empowered by the second screen because 40% of them are going further down to look for information about the contents. And on advertising, 15%. So there as well, it is not good, not bad. We, I think it's still something we have to learn, but I see an advertising of Coca-Cola on the screen and I see on my second screen that I go, 15% of the people are saying I'm surfing to look for more information about the advertising I saw. So there is a a branding or an advertising empowerment for 15% of the people and a content empowerment for 40% of the people as well. If you summarize, because it's a lot of data, and again, if you want data from Mediascope, from all the other countries that you saw on the map, just take contact with the IBs for Macedonia very soon. I hope we will add the flag of Macedonia on the study and you will be able to get that data as well. But certainly one thing we have to learn or to remember from Mediascope, it is of course that the, the choice of the consumption for news, radio, TV, etc., is more and more the digital platforms, the online or the internet. So there is a kind of convergence towards. Access to internet is not only by PC anymore. It is also through smartphone, through, uh, through uh, pads, or also for younger population through the game consoles, so you see that the access to the internet is coming from different devices. People, and pe uh, people are more and more saying that um, they are watching also TV on their PC. So from the family experience in a living room, you're moving to an individual experience behind your PC. So that's also a trend that we need to watch out and learn from that when we are doing media strategies and communication strategies. And also, internet really influences the way you look to brands. The opinion you have about the brand is not only driven by what you see on the street or in the store, but also from what you see online about that brand. So be careful if you operate online. It's not just I have a website and we'll see. I think it's, it's very important because it influences the opinion that people have about your brand. One big challenge, and I always uh, remind that to everybody, I was talking about regulation earlier, we need law. But we also need, as an industry, we need to be respectful to the consumer. We need to re-establish sometimes a little bit of the trust, because I'm sure that some of you as well, and maybe some people in Macedonia, have the feeling sometimes Big Brother is watching me. And that feeling, we need to be much more transparent with what we do. And in, in Brussels, the commissioner have, have, have somewhere called us and said, like, you need to be more transparent and you need to give to the consumer a way to, to, to have choice, to say yes or no. Uh, what are you giving us services? Location-based services, how is it working? Well, we are observing with the Bluetooth and with the GPS function, we observe where you are, and we try to surround you with relevant information because we know not who you are, but we know where you are. We know maybe your preferences or what you like, and we try to surround you with useful information, relevant information. And that's the dream of any marketeer, the right message to the right people at the right place on the right time. Now, location-based services, sometimes people are scared about it. Same for targeting techniques. We are saying more and more we are targeting advertising to you. Well, sometimes people might have concerns about that, and that's why we need to be transparent and to give choice and control to the consumer. And that is for me called respect, 
and it will be important. Now, if you have a plastic bottle, on a plastic bottle you sometimes see a little icon, an icon that is saying recyclable. What does it mean to you? You say this bottle, we can recycle. Our icon will be that icon. The triangle that you see there, you will see it more and more in the US, more and more in Europe, appearing everywhere. Just to say what to the consumer, click on it. Click on this icon if you want to know that you have a choice and it will lead you to a website that is translated already today in 24 languages and we will continue to translate it to any language that is necessary in Europe where we explain on the website you have a choice. We explain what is online advertising, what is targeting, what is an IP address, what is a cookie and we give to them a way to opt out, to say I don't want to be tracked and traced. I opt out of that system and I can revise regularly. It's nearly like a control cockpit. The consumer can go into it and say yes, no, and change from week to week, from month to month, from period to period, from age, whatever. But people can influence and get a choice and control themselves a little bit what we can and can't do towards them. So this initiative is an enormous initiative, but for me, capital and important. And we created another nonprofit that's the association called EDAA, and EDAA is there to promote self-regulation in digital practices. We already did self-regulation in advertising since long, but about the ethical part. We, we sometimes say like this is a, this advertising, ah, I don't know, maybe it's creative, but it is, it is sexist or it, it is racist and, and we don't like it, so we self-regulate already uh, our advertising a little bit, but here, it is really more about self-regulation in digital practices. Step number one, targeting techniques. And then we will see what other things we will try to tackle in the future. But so be careful and participate in Macedonia as well to this huge initiative. It is to put out the icon on advertising for digital platforms. If things are not clear, contact IB Macedonia or contact IB Europe and we can explain and put you in touch with the right people. I could have said thank you in Macedonian, next time you have to learn me. I will do it next time for sure. But thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to introduce this uh, congress and seminar and also to, yeah, to be a little bit proud that we have uh, country number 28 but Macedonia on the map, well done. If you have any question now, later, but you can always send me a mail, president at ibeurope.eu, and I will answer with my team. Thank you very much.